Hi everyone, my name is Rajni and welcome to S Cube TV. Today I have with me a very, very special guest joining us from Northern Ireland. His name is Mr. JP Tuggett. He is a world host facil uh, facilitator. Did I pronounce it right? Yep. <laughs> okay. And also uh, a director and development coach. So without wasting any time, let's just welcome him to S Cube TV and talk to him more about uh, his journey, his work, and you'll get to know more. So before, uh, hi, Mr. JP, welcome to S Cube TV. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for having me here. I'm delighted to to be on and to be speaking to you. I'm doing very well today. Thank you. The weather's not so bad where we come from. Uh, it, it's usually rainy. So mm -hmm. today it's it's dry, which means it's a good day. <laughs> oh, OK. I mean, uh, I think it's good for you. It's a sign that um, it is going to be good interview, is it? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, great. So, you know, um, you are a development coach and also a director and world host facilitator. So I would like to know more as in my audiences would, would also like to know more as in about yeah. your journey and how did you become this? So if you can talk about that. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I'm a development coach uh, and that means developing people. Uh, we have a website called Developing Your People. Uh, so everything that we do at Core Impact, I don't know if it's going to pick it up either side, but uh, okay. my, my standing here. So uh, everything that we do is linked to developing people uh, and businesses with a strong focus on organizational culture. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's essentially it's essentially creating an environment people work within that they want to continue to work within and grow within and um, in terms of my my background i come from a hospitality and uh, sort of tourism background uh, so mm -hmm. where, where we where we live you, you might have heard of the titanic before <laughs> um and uh where, where we come from is very it's a very much a tourist hotspot. so it's it's somewhere that everyone would understand the titanic exhibition center and people from all around the world come here um, so that, that provides a unique opportunity uh, to try and capture customers and, and retain them to come back another time. Um, and so with that in mind, uh, my colleague Sean and I decided to become World Host uh, Customer Service Facilitators, which means essentially we help local organizations um, in that aspect to teach their teams how okay. to have great customer service and how to create great experiences for their people. Um, so that, that's something we're very, very passionate about, and that's where the world host element comes in. But as a whole, we are a consultancy organization, and we, we facilitate uh, large-scale projects, uh, but also work with one-to-one -one, uh, leaders, uh, mm -hmm. one-to-one -one with leaders to, to teach them more about organizational culture. Oh, okay. I mean, that's really amazing. And but I just, I mean, you know, I just, I have just one question in my mind. When you talk that, when you spoke about your journey before becoming a development coach, so you said you were from hospitality, right? Yes. So you know how? I mean, from hospitality to becoming a development coach, how that that journey happened, and what made you think of um, getting into, you know, uh, helping leaders and business and organization? So yeah, I would like to know that. Okay, so when we, uh, in my position, uh, I worked in uh, the within the tourism and hospitality sort of sector because of where the location of the business was. And so we actually ran what's called a family entertainment center. Um, and what that included was a 20 lane bowling alley. Um, it included a, a full like, fully licensed restaurant. And then we had an arcade game area, um, which was like the downstairs and the upstairs. So it was a large site. Mm, excuse me. Um, and the, the business when we took over as managers was actually under administration. So the, they were the, it was in almost liquidation when we took mm -hmm. over. And it meant that the company we had worked for at the time, Movie House Cinemas, um, had taken over the contract to basically manage the site out of administration. Um, so it was really difficult circumstances that we worked under. And there, there was uh, we had a team of people who we had never managed before, had been put together by a recruitment agency. Um, and there wasn't very much money to spend on things like staff incentives uh, to make a really nice working environment for, for the staff because the bank were obviously having to pay a lot of bills. And so very early on, we realized, OK, well, we're going to have to create a, a plan that makes people want to work here rather than thinking, you know, 
we have no money to spend on keeping them here. We have no money to spend on staff incentives and, and making it attractive for people to want to work with us. But what we did have was time. We did have passion. And we, we had a, a knowledge that if you treat people right, they will continue to work well for you. Um, mm -hmm. And they'll want to stay with you and grow through that organization. Mm -hmm. um, and, and very quickly into my career as a, as a manager, I realized that that's what I love to do. I love to take somebody who maybe didn't have a lot of experience or maybe came from a difficult background and they maybe hadn't been given an opportunity to showcase what they could achieve before. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started developing uh, the leaders within that organization. We, we started uh, focusing on the management team, which were ourselves and the people coming behind us, but also the informal leaders of the organization, which were, let's face it, you, you can walk into an organization and the secretary, secretary at the front of the business can have just as much influence as some of the higher up managers. Mm -hmm. because they, they know everybody who comes through the door. They greet everybody every day. And they can make your life pretty difficult as a job if they want to. So with, with, that, with that in mind, we, we understand that you need to treat everybody well. You need to make everyone feel that they're part of something bigger. And so we started creating projects that uh, had a massive impact on the, the success of that organization. Now, we took that over in 2010 as managers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that business, that business is still operating today. And it's actually an industry leading business within uh, Northern Ireland, within its industry. So it, what we implemented had clearly worked and it, we would focus with businesses on employee uh, retention. So keeping your people for longer um, and, and reducing the costs that come along with recruitment. Um, so what we found was if we focus on the, the elements that we created, which we now call impact success, which is our, our consultancy package that we use um, and our model, uh, you can actually save money and time on the bottom line of the business, which is hugely beneficial, especially when we were working with the bank, who were very much, how can we save money? How can we make more money at the same time? And mm -hmm. um, we learned that if you implement the processes that we created, you can keep your people. I think at one point we had zero employee turnover. Nobody left for a full two year period. Um, mm -hmm. which meant that I think on average we could have saved anywhere in between sort of 30 and, and 45,000 pounds on recruitment costs alone. So that's a big saving for business per year and it, it showed that what we were doing worked. Um, and, and on our journey, we, we learned that uh, we wanted to do that full time. We, we loved what we'd done in the aspect that we did it. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we still manage that team. Our, our employer took us on as a client. Uh, we took them as on as a client. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we run that site and continue to work on that site really effectively. But what we're really passionate about is working with leaders, uh, teaching them the impact success model that they can implement into any organization, regardless of industry, because it's not just hospitality. It's all about the structure. It's all about responsibilities. And most importantly, it's about the vision for that company um, and the, the core values that go along with that vision in order to succeed in, in creating that vision for uh, the, to be a reality, essentially. Um, so we, we stepped away in August 2019 uh, full time. The business was mm -hmm. incorporated uh, through in the UK in 2017, but we were still working full time at that stage. Um, and we, we stepped away in August 2019 full time to run Core Impact and live our dream, essentially. And, that, and that's what we're doing right now. We're, we're living our dream and working with organizations to create real change, beneficial change for, for the organization and helping organizations and individuals to achieve their full potential. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it also involves personal development uh, Development then. I mean, uh, uh, with the organization that you work for or the leader, so it also involves personal development as in one-to-one? -one? Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, it, okay. it, it, uh, so we are actually executive coaches also. Mm -hmm. And we're finishing off a, a, qual a qualification with the International Coach Federation and mm -hmm. um, ICF. And when we become associates of that, well, we're already doing it, but we're, we're aiming towards becoming associates of that um, uh, so that we can add value on a global scale. Um, <clears throat> part of the things that we do uh, would be working alongside leaders who are already in an organization. But we've found that there's a lot of entrepreneurs uh, and people who have come from different industries. We want to add value to uh, new organizations as a consultant. And we've found that a lot of people have reached out to us uh, mm -hmm. to find out what's the best way to add value to organizations. So one of the ways that we do that is 
we work with that individual to find out what they truly want to achieve um, through through an executive coaching process um, mm -hmm. and mo models that we use through ICF. And, and that also allows us to add value to those people to go and do what they love to do, like DR. Okay. Okay. So can you, if I ask you, so can you, I mean, it's a lot to ask, but, uh, you know, in simple steps, can you just break down, I mean, uh, the steps that you follow to for the development of the organization or the leaders? I mean, how exactly do you do that? Okay. So um, it, it, with any consultant. I hope I'm not asking too much. You're fine. No, it, it's, it's, I'm more, more than happy. We're, we're doing it every day and it's what I love to do. So I, give me a, okay. give me a platform and I'll talk all day about it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, so I mentioned the impact success model. OK, mm -hmm. so with the impact success model, we have identified five key areas um, that we believe that if you focus on, you will create a winning culture. Right? It doesn't matter if you are a, an organization with five people or five thousand people or fifty thousand people. Uh, you can implement this this process and explain it to your leaders, formal mm -hmm. and informal. And, and make any type of change. And it can be on, in a small group within the organization or the whole organization. Um, and so it starts with these five areas. So the first one, as I mentioned already, is strategy. I, with, with, with any organization, you always have to have a strategy for what you're wanting to achieve. That's your objective, your KPIs, your goals. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we, first and foremost, when we work with an organization, we explain to them that in order for us to work with you, you need to know where you're going. Mm -hmm. um, so we will work with them and we do a workshop called a, a visioning and core values workshop. Um, mm -hmm. And what we do is we work with the senior team of the, uh, usually the owners or the directors or senior managers. And um, we sit down and we take stock of where is your vision now? Where, where do you see the organization and do you have a vision? You know, a lot of organizations are just working away every day. Um, and, and they don't actually fully understand where the end goal is, where are they actually trying to go with the organization. So we, we have a unique workshop that we have created and we facilitate the leaders of the organization to create a vision for the future, a very tangible vision that they all agree on. Um, mm -hmm. And what that, what that does is that creates a powerful feeling within the management team that mm -hmm. they understand where they are all going. We, we know where we want to go. And the reason that's important is because once you know where you want to end up, what you're trying to achieve is the goals that when you step backwards towards where you are now, you mm -hmm. know what you need to do in order to get to your goals. And mm -hmm. um, so we also help them with the goals and objectives. And um, obviously every organization is different. So we're very much facilitating that discussion and they know that they will know what they need to do. And um, but as part of that, what we do is we, we explain to them that you need to have strong core values that actually mean something to the organization and more importantly, the people. Um, and so we will, we will uh, I suppose, challenge the senior team um, to either come up with something in the room or come up with suggestions that they believe they could pass on to the rest of the team to agree with. And the reason why core values are so important, we, it's almost like goalposts. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to achieve your vision, mm -hmm. the core values are the elements of the organization's behaviors that allow you to stay within the remit in order to achieve that goal, the vision. Excuse me. So for us, for instance, when we worked with the people we worked with and continue to work with, we had five core key values, five core key values, which would be the elements that they need to use when they're dealing with customers, when they're dealing with any stakeholder or indeed themselves. So it's almost a, a case of you know where we're going, and we also know what way we need to act in order to serve one thing. Um, so that's that strategy. The very next okay. point in the, five, in the five elements is leadership. So it's understanding leadership. Like I mentioned, we, we do leadership workshops. We explain to people the importance of leadership, the elements of leadership, uh, what it means, and, and the importance of understanding not only do you have a responsibility, but you have you have to prove yourself to your team that you actually are fit to lead them, and you do that by example. You lead by example, and that's the very first thing that we teach. And um, but we also let them understand that it's important to nurture the relationships within the team for the informal leaders. So, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, you, you asked the process. The first process would be that we would meet with the team, we, the management team. We would find their vision. We would get their core values. But then we would put out an online diagnostic survey to the rest of the organization, the team, 
Um, and what that does is there's specific questions that we ask, which gives us a view of what their view of the organization is. Um, and the way that that comes out is it's their view of the company as a whole, uh, the employee's view of the management team, their view of the, the future of the organization, and also the view of the team that they work within, and then finally themselves. We follow that up with a, uh, a focus group. So we, we speak to samples of the organizational team, mm -hmm. um, and we try to pull out more findings that we, we find that we think and assume, uh, because we don't like to assume, but we, we, we have recommendations that we believe we can take from the questionnaires. Mm -hmm. But before we go back to the management team to make the recommendations of the changes that they need to make, uh, we, we put it out to the team and we focus on those focus groups. We, we ask them questions and say, look, this is what the data shows, but can you give us more detail about what that means? Um, you know, you might find that there's a, an employee engagement issue or you might identify that there's a massive communication issue within the organization. And the focus groups give us an opportunity to ask the question and say, you know, what about communication is wrong or, or specifically can you give us an example so that we can speak to the management team and let them know where the divide is um so that's strategy leadership and there's three other elements so the next element is communication um, and that kind of falls into what what you mentioned about world host world mm -hmm. host customer service training is all about communication it's understanding how you perceive how people perceive you how you can create first lasting impressions and them to be positive ones um, and we go back to the fundamentals. We, we, we do workshops with the whole organization um, or a select amount that the organization pick, and we teach them about communication. Um, and the funny thing about communication is it doesn't matter how good your communication is, it can always be better. Um, mm -hmm. And I find that even organizations who work within communications and they're a communication organization, uh, you, you might still find that somebody who's working under somebody else may mm -hmm. not be communicating in an effective way um, and we teach people a little more about emotional intelligence and understanding the situation that's happening um, and the importance of two-way process communication. Um, and, and that's a very beneficial workshop. And then lastly, the last two parts are uh, motivation. So uh, focusing on intrinsic motivation rather than paying people more to do a better job. It's about once you've dealt with the strategy, the leadership and the communication elements, we would assume and what we find is relationships within the organization get better therefore the, the leaders in the organization understand more about their employees uh, and what happens in that scenario is they're able to identify the, the real intrinsic motivations of each of the employees um, and as a result of that they can create more effective projects uh, rolling out new schemes and um, when they're asking their team to, when they're trying to incentivize pr productivity, they don't mm -hmm. necessarily think, let's give more money. They might say, well, I know that you're really interested in uh, working out. I, I know that you're really interested in that. So I was thinking I would give you an opportunity to create something that you could help everybody else work out or, or teach us a little bit more about you, your, your knowledge of health and social. Um, and once you dive into the, that communication element, it's much more productive as a company and people are just happier in general. Um, and, the, and the final part is mindset. Um, we, we have associate partners that we work with that uh, moving forward we will be using to come in and explain more about well-being within the workplace, uh, working, working uh, in, a, in a sense that your people can have problems and that they shouldn't need, be made to feel that they have to leave their problems at the door. Um, that their problems, if you have a problem at home, you probably will allow that to impact your productivity yeah. at a certain yeah. stage if it's such an issue and it's it kind of goes back to the leaders again to identify those and give the the issue a real uh, chance to, for itself and give that person a chance to explain what the situation is and um, and be really empathetic towards what's going on but uh, all together well-being is interwoven throughout everything that we do but, but specifically it's about creating strategies that remove any barriers organize in the organization and processes that allow people to feel that if they have a problem they can come to their manager and say i'm not feeling good today or i have an issue going on at home and i, I have i feel that i may not be as productive as i could be and many most organizations wouldn't necessarily have the or any ones that we come across wouldn't necessarily have an atmosphere where people feel that it's it's safe to feel or it's safe to not be okay 
Mm -hmm. um, and what we're trying to do is create organizations where, you know, it's actually to your benefit if you create an, or an organizational uh, culture that people feel welcome to open up and say, you know, I don't feel good, but I appreciate, you know, what we're trying to teach is that if you take that time with somebody and you allow them that space, they'll actually work harder for you when they are feeling good. Um, mm -hmm. and, and for us, that's what's worked. Uh, we have a lot of experience in dealing with people with mental health issues. Um, and we've worked with local organizational charities uh, who have taught us more, but also we've used them as a kind of um, uh, a vehicle to bring somebody from a bad place to a good place uh, mentally. Mm -hmm. um, and, and essentially the, the projects that we run uh, can run uh, the full project, the Impact Success Project, is anything between sort of six to 12 months, could be up to 18 months, depending on the size of the organization. Mm -hmm. um, but we've also had organizations who say, you know, we, we specifically want to focus on the, the vision and the values, or some other organizations say, actually, I think we have a good vision and values, uh, but we want to focus on communication. So we do individual projects also. I mean, that's really amazing. I mean, uh, you know, while you were actually breaking down the steps, um, that you follow, it was actually um, speaking for the name of the organization, which is Core Impact. It's just not the name. It is actually Core Impact because you have yeah. explained so beautifully all the steps and everything that you follow for the organization and also for the leaders. So that's really, really Thank amazing. You. Uh, yeah, Thank I mean, you. that's you're welcome. And I mean, you I mean, it shows the hard work that you are doing and it shows the um, it's it speaks for the name that which is Core Impact. So yeah. it speaks for itself. Yeah. So I, because you know, you are, you have, you and your partner, I, uh, Sean is, um, yeah. is that right? Yeah. So yeah. you guys are, are such an expert and I mean, I would like to know, and uh, because you know, you are such hard workers and it shows uh, in, in your plan, but I also would like to know uh, for other organization who are planning for um, coaching or who are planning to hire coaches. So how do they, um, I mean, get the right coach for their business? Yeah, How so, it, yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's sorry, I cut across you there. <laughs> no, 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 I was just asking that, how should they decide who is the right coach and who should they go for? Yeah, so we're, we're lucky now that uh, social media is, is a fantastic tool to use in finding any type of information. I think that uh, it's far surpassed, uh, social media has far surpassed normal news channels on television. Um, and any information that we get these days usually comes from an internet source, which is usually through your likes of Twitter or Facebook. Or get, we are very strong on uh, LinkedIn. Um, and what I would say is there, there are many different channels you can use in order to find a coach for you. Um, what I would say is just obviously be careful that you're not signing up to something that uh, is a program that maybe isn't going to add the value that you want. You need to, to identify, do I want a personal one-on-one -on -one coaching session um, like we provide? Or do I want to be in a situation where I'm part of a cohort of people and we're all learning something? Now, executive coaching can be done in a team format, um, but you, mostly it would be done one-to-one. -one. And uh, Thankfully, we, we know a few people who have actually written books. Uh, a friend of ours, Paul Barber, um, from Northern Ireland also, uh, he's actually written a book about team coaching um, and it's actually being published uh, in January time and he's a fascinating character and he's the guy who actually put us, a friend of ours who put us in touch um, with our, our coach who is teaching us how to, how to executive coach. So it's important to understand there are groups that you can join that can give you more information. Um, local to, the best thing about, uh, obviously, COVID going on, um, mm -hmm. I think we've all learned that uh, Skype and Zoom and, you know, if, if only we had known beforehand, we could have bought shares in uh, Zoom. I think we'd all be rich. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, globalization is a real thing. The world feels smaller. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't necessarily need to have a coach who's geographically close to you. You can have calls like you're a different part of the world. I'm in a different part of the world and we're having a normal conversation. OK, maybe it may break up a little bit, but we're having a conversation and it, we're, we're able to communicate effectively and get our point across and hopefully create energy. OK, mm -hmm. and the point on uh, coaching is you need to firstly do a bit of uh, looking into what is it you actually need? Do you need a coach and do you understand what coaching is? Because I find people use the word coach 
a lot, but they may not actually be using the models of coaching. Okay. Um, and, and there's a running joke in our coaching circles that you kind of get a little bit snobbish when you see people saying, I'm a coach, when in fact they're not actually doing what the fundamentals of coaching is. Um, you, there, there's a difference between somebody who's your mentor who can give you advice and somebody okay. who's a coach who can actually teach you, or sorry, facilitate you in, in overcoming an obstacle. And, and what I would say is go on social media, do a little bit of research, but also find somebody who resonates with you, somebody whose message that you find or you feel like you've got a connection with. And if they are a coach and the, the, the cost isn't too high for you, then reach out to them and, and build a relationship with that person. And I think social media is the best way to do it. Yeah, I mean, that is that is uh, very, very true. And, you know, like not everybody is a doctor. A dentist is a dentist. He's not a doctor. So exactly. I think uh, not everybody is a coach. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I also would like to know that um, uh, does every organization needs a coach or I mean, is it important for every organization or every leader to have a coach or they can, you know, work uh, on by themselves too? So, yeah, it, it, I suppose, look, I could argue that I think I think it's fantastic. And I think that if you're open to it, everyone could benefit from coaching. And okay. I think that I think a lot of organizations don't necessarily know what coaching is. I think there's an educational uh, need here. I think that people mm -hmm. need to learn a little bit more. Um, so when I say I'm a, a development coach, it's very much an executive coaching attitude. Um, but when we're when we're working with organizations, we, we are while we offer executive coaching, uh, mm -hmm. we, we believe that what we're doing is we're actually either mentoring or uh, assisting and facilitating organizations to make changes. So the coaching element would be a very specific uh, element to it, as in we work one to one or we work with a specific group. And um, I think every organization can benefit from having some element of coaching for I find it can work for anybody, but it, it could be particularly effective for leaders within the organization because leaders are dealing with issues on a day to day basis um, and, and they're having a lot of pressure put on them. Um, and I find that sometimes you can you can uh, have an issue that it's just a block. You're, you get in your own way. Um, and I find that coaching is a good way in order to get out of your own way. Uh, uh, it's, it's a way in which you can overcome uh, cognitive issues that you have, mm -hmm. whether it be something as simple as you, you feel like you're not maybe being an effective leader with a specific person that you work with. And maybe you're having an issue with them, but you want to, you want to do better and you, you don't want to have this mindset that they're not going to work very hard because they haven't before. And coaching can help you get over those types of issues. It's very specific uh, issues with, I mean, in coaching, you can sit in silence and somebody just wants to be heard. Mm -hmm. And it's much more about listening and guidance mm -hmm. rather than making assumptions and telling people what to do. That is not coaching whatsoever. Um, but what I would say is I think every organization based on organizational culture i believe that they need to have some sort of process or some sort of mindset around the importance of creating culture i don't think there's any organization in the world whether you're a single person and run your own type of business or you have thousands hundreds of thousands of people working for you i think it's important to have the what i mentioned about impact success i think you need to understand that each of those areas no matter what size organization you are, will come into play at some point or another. And that's why we identified those area, areas. You know, if you have a business idea, you have to think strategy. You have to think, well, what am I trying to do? What, what problem am I trying to solve? And how can I do that? What will it look like? How did I measure it? What am I trying to achieve? You know, leadership is important because as soon as you have anybody else in the organization, you need to lead that person towards that vision that you created as, a, as an entrepreneur. Communication is important because we communicate just like we are now on every single basis. Um, and motivation is something that every organization around the world struggles to try and motivate their people. Um, mm -hmm. and, and getting a grip on that mixed with the other elements and the well-being attitude that we try to incorporate, I think that is definitely needed. Um, the, re the reason why I highlight that more so than the coaching specifically, um, I think coaching can add value in any sense. I think it can add value in any organization. Um, but many people, I think, hear the word coach and don't actually know what it means. So they might actually seek help. But what they might actually be looking for is a mentor, uh, somebody like a, or a consultant like ourselves who can come in and say, you know what, with all the knowledge that you've given us and the, the issues that you're facing, 
these are the recommendations that we give you. Uh, coaching is very much a, a therapeutic al element to it. And it's, it's much more sit back, tell me what you want to discuss today, and let's find out how we can get you there. Um, and we, we have now incorporated that into the projects that we do, but they can be taken out also. Okay, so it basically it works like a motivational tool for coaching. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. So now, because you know, you are such an expert in your field, and also you have such great knowledge about business organization and you know their works, and also leaders, leadership. So, um, have you ever thought of uh, having your own business or starting your own business? Yeah. Well, well, me and Sean are the two. We are the owners of Core Impact. So okay. the, this, this was this was our step. So when we worked for Odyssey, uh, the site that we worked for before, um, it was, uh, to give you a bit of info, uh, at the time, but my personal journey was that I messed around in school. I, I think I, I'm a classic entrepreneur in that I had knowledge and I had intelligence. Um, sorry, I had intelligence, I had uh, ability, but mm -hmm. uh, school didn't necessarily work for me. Um, so I done well, I just didn't do as good as I could have done. Um, and I went straight out into work um, and I worked my butt off and uh, Sean was my manager. Mm -hmm. um, and so he had sort of taught me everything about leadership that I knew at that stage. Um, and at the same time, I started going back to school. So I actually went and done a business studies degree. Um, and uh, I, so my knowledge, sorry, my experience and my knowledge kind of came par on par. I would say my experience obviously far away is my knowledge in terms of uh, academia, but because I've done it and I've seen it and I know it works. Um, so I pitched the idea to Sean. And now, me and my fiance, we don't have any kids. Uh, Sean's married and he has three kids. Um, and so at the time that I pitched the idea to him, he had he had two children at the time. And he was thinking, you know, risky, have a good job here. Um, I don't know if it's, my, if it's a good time for me. But I was selling the idea of Core Impact before we even called it Core Impact to Sean. Um, and that was very much my entrepreneurial journey in that, you know, what could be. You know, at that stage, we were, as I said, we mentioned, we worked in really, really difficult circumstances. We were told that we could close, the doors could be closed at any day for no reason. And um, we were doing really good business, but the bank could just decide, you know what, we're selling it to somebody else. Um, with that knowledge in place, we created a team who are an award-winning team. Um, we, we won awards for customer service excellence within Northern Ireland at uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, Belfast Business Awards, which is in Northern Ireland. I was lucky enough to win um, an award for General Manager of the Future in 2018 um, from the Institute of Hospitality in Northern Ireland, um, which I'm very proud of. I was very proud of that. Um, and, you know, we I found that uh, when, when we made that jump back in August 2019, um, it was a scary, scary situation, um, but there is there is no feeling like mm -hmm. the one that you have when you run your own organization, and, and that's what we do. But I, I remember speaking to people who are watching or maybe having a business idea, and they think, I need security. And I do this because security is just a mindset. Um, you, you can work for an organization, and we, we, there's, a, there's a, a local entrepreneur called uh, Dave Linton, um, and Dave, Dave's somebody who we've always looked up to. We've had very little contact with him, but we've always looked up to him. Um, and he runs what's called a social enterprise here in Northern Ireland, um, and it's called Madlug, M-A-D-L-U-G. And uh, Madlug is an organization that people, children who are in uh, care, so they've been taken away from their parents, or, or for whatever reason they're in the social welfare system, or the social system, sorry, um, he, he creates bags, so he sells apparel and clothing, I think now, uh, but mostly bags. And every time you buy a bag from him, he gives a bag for free to a child who's in care. Um, and it's a fantastic, I, I highly recommend anyone going to check out Dave's website. He's a fantastic guy, a brilliant story, and he's really making a difference in this world, which we absolutely love. And we were, we were at an event, so we before COVID, we would have went to a lot of face-to-face -face events now it's all online which is good you actually get more done but uh dave stopped us after the event and he said guys could I have a chat because i've been following your journey for a wee while now for us that was huge because we really looked up to him so the fact that he was watching what we were doing really gave us a spur on um and dave said something that really resonated with me that night uh, as we stood in the freezing cold outside 
Um, and he said, you know, people seem to think that there's security that comes from working for somebody else. He said, but I would argue that, in fact, there's more security in working for yourself because when you work for someone else, you're working towards their dream. And if something goes wrong in their dream, they could close up shop and you could be out of a job. Whereas if you're working for your own dream, you're going to make sure things work out. But you have control regardless of the situation. You have control of what happens to your dream. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I love about entrepreneurship. That's what I love about working uh, for myself. And that's what I love about uh, being able to make the decisions that we do every day and not have somebody dictate to us. Okay, I mean, that's really great. So, but, but you know, um, uh, someone you actually looked up to, he actually called you and he actually, um, you know, spoke to you and said such mo motivating uh, thing. That's really, really, um, you know, I, I feel really happy for you. Uh, Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, uh, because now you are also an entrepreneur and you have this business and organization called Core Impact. So have you guys sort of uh, having a development coach for yourself? Do, do we have coaches? Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just saying. You know, uh, I'm just. I was just joking. That did you guys think of having a coach? Or I mean. Yes, yes, and and and, and that's the beauty. You know, there, there's no room for ego when it comes to your own personal development, um, okay. and it's important what you collectively find. If you if you study on you you. We all have people we look up to, whether it's in the music industry, whether it's in the makeup industry, or for our yeah. perspective, the, the entrepreneurial ship, uh, entre entrepreneurship community. And um, there are people who stand out. So um, there's people you can look up to at the highest scale. You know, so I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Gary Vaynerchuk um, or uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's like a media tycoon in America. Um, mm -hmm. And he's just somebody who every young person who wants to be an entrepreneur looks up to um, and then you've got people like Gra Grant Cardone who I don't follow just as much as I would with Gary um, but he is he's the one of the number one sales people in the world in the sense that most people follow him so mm -hmm. not that he's the best salesman in the world because I don't know the man and um, what I do know is many people follow his books and his teachings but in terms of one-on-one -on -one coaching I think it's imperative and if you if you speak to anyone who is successful in life, especially in business, they will always have somebody who is a mentor for them. And they will always have somebody who they've learned off. Um, and they'll always have somebody either if it's that, that person's directly in relationship in a relationship, like they have a relationship with them from that perspective, or mm -hmm. they look up they look up to a historical figure who has come before who have passed away and they look at them and say, I love their teachings and that inspires me. Um, and I think that anyone who wants to be successful in life, they, um, they, they learn very quickly that you don't have all the answers and you won't have all the answers. Um, and collaboration is very, very important. And for us, for us, we've been very lucky in that we have had many people who have influenced our journey. Mm -hmm. I, remember, I remember when we first stepped away, uh, I was so overwhelmed in the sense that I remember thinking, even before we stepped away, I was thinking, how do you know, how do you get to know these people? How do you, how do you learn? How do, you, how do you get to know entrepreneurs and business owners? You know, to me, I felt like they were in these ivory towers that we could never reach. But then what, you, what I learned was you need to share your journey. So we started a, a campaign that we, we shared our journey every day on social media, specifically on LinkedIn. Excuse me. And we, we found that people reached out to us and spurred us on. So they, they said, well done, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, and somebody who had a big influence from us stepping away from our full-time job into our, our now full-time job as our own business was a, a man called uh, Gavin Wall. Um, Gavin Wall is a local entrepreneur and business owner um, from Northern Ireland. He, he is very well known. Um, and we built up a relationship with Gavin because he had put out a free invitation to, uh, uh, to the first sort of 30 people who contacted him. He would give them a, a free 30-minute uh, session and it was a coaching slash mentor slash just get to know you session. Um, and we went to one of those sessions and, and that sparked a relationship with him. Um, and then we actually paid him to be our mentor. So rather okay. than coaching, we, want, we wanted somebody who had been there. We wanted somebody who would say, signpost us and say, guys, you do this, don't do that. Learn from my experience. Um, and Gavin was one of the big reasons why we pushed ourselves to step away as early as we could from our mm -hmm. full-time work. 
but what that done was Gavin opened up doors for us in the sense that people started watching our journey because Gavin was promoting it. Um, but we, he, what he taught us was build connections, okay. share, your, share your journey, teach people what you have learned and pull people up as you go. And, and these, are, these are lessons that we were already using when it came to working within an organization as a leader. But he helped us to transition into the entrepreneurship and business owner mindset. Um, and now, now we're, we're influenced by so many people across the world, but, but more, more specifically here in Northern Ireland, we, we have many people we look up to um, who maybe not even necessarily give us advice. Many do, not necessarily all of them, but many we, we are just on a journey together. So they started around the same time as us, or they're trying to achieve something similar. There's, there's too many to mention, but a few to sort of spring to mind are, are people like uh, Henry McCrory, who we're hoping to try and work with. That's what the stadium part is, but when you share your journey with people and they have so much knowledge, um, they see these types of people usually see an opportunity. And if they see something that we could work on together, they'll usually say, Look, do you want to try this with me? And for us, what that does is that's separate to Core Impact, but it actually elevates us as Core Impact and as Sean and JP. Because when you get to work with these people, it's not just a project you're working on, the knowledge and experience. And some of these people are a good bit older than us, but they've been around the block a couple of times, and they know that they know they're in the know. That's that, that the colloquialism from here. They, they just understand the situation, um, and there's people like Gary Doherty and, and Aaron Watson, and, and these are people who you won't know, um, but to us, they're geographically close to us, and we watch mm-hmm. them. Um, but you know. I, I mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk on the on the international stage, and he's somebody who I'd watch stuff. But it's all about personal development as well. It's it's about finding your own way and being inspired by these people, but finding your own voice and the way that you do that. Okay, I mean, uh, so if you want to be successful in um, you know in your business or in whichever field that you are, so you should have no ego. No, I I believe that anyone who has look, there, there's people who are salesmen and women. Um, who maybe lead with ego and they, they lead with the bravado of I can sell anything to anyone and that works for them. Okay. But what I have found in my personal opinion is if you have too big an ego and you think you can do everything yourself, it's a fast way to fail. Um, I okay. find that if you if you allow your ego to get into the, in the way, then you, and what I mean by that is if you have an ego, you, you won't want to learn from anybody else you'll think you have the answers uh, and you don't in business. You don't, even if you are an expert in the field, you may not have the skills in order to communicate your, your, your uh, knowledge. You may not have the, the, the know-how or the ability to sell what you're mm-hmm. trying to do. And sometimes pride can get in the way. Ego can get in the way. What I've found is it's better to be open. And if you don't mm-hmm. know something, you don't know it, say you don't know it. And okay. the best, the most successful people I know are the people who are very unassuming and they say, I don't know that. Can you explain it, please? And when you explain it, they take it in, they apply it to their own personal journey. And then they, it, you know, I, I find that there's a lot of people who will point and blame and say, oh, they don't know what they're talking about and they don't know what they're saying. And, and I'm an expert and you're not and whatever. Those people maybe have a little bit of success. But for the most part, they won't have too many cheerleaders. They won't have that many people coming around them and going, you're brilliant. Mm -hmm. They will have people like minded to them who think the same way. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's the people who are open, who do things that, let's face it, on on YouTube. I mean, that's the second second most used search engine in the world. The the viral videos are the ones that are crazy or or you're like, I can't believe they've done that, or mm-hmm. really inspirational. You know, maybe they're making a point that is is a, a topic that not many people like to talk about. So therefore, people are attracted to it. Those people who are really pushing the limits themselves of their industry, of the people around them, they're the ones that people uh, that are most successful. And I find that ego does not have a place when you have true success and or, or you want continued success. Okay, okay. That's really great. I mean, um, that's really great what you said. 
excuse me uh, but you know uh, i have uh, i think two or three minutes more left to, uh, for the show so i just would like yeah. to quickly ask one more question to you but you, you know people really have these ethics and um this principle when they start off their business that they are not going to do this they are going to you know they have their set of rules for uh, for themselves and also for the business that they do so yeah. and um, so uh, as a coach w- would you say that um it i mean those principle and ethics should be there or i mean a uh, at times you might also need to cross it yes uh, so the way i mentioned uh, core values earlier in the conversation uh, that's what i refer to when it comes to ethics your your core values are uh, you know somebody once said to us your core values should be the things that really sign post how you act and behave so if you are somebody who believe in ethics in the sense that you're like i won't do that or i won't work with this type of person or you know everything i do a certain percentage has to go to charity you know don't step away from those ethics don't allow anyone even if it's the best business deal in the world if it impacts your core values if it changes who you are as a person or what you want your business to be fundamentally while it might be a short win and um, ultimately you will lose your way on the way to the vision that you created for your organization or yourself so i think it's highly important that you have your ethics and you know I, I'm not I'm not bashing anyone by the way when it comes to ego if you're somebody who thinks I just want to be a person who sells this mindset and and I think it'll add value to people then I'm not the judge it's I'm not a judge but uh I would say ethics are highly highly important you should always want to strive to be as I said pulling people up and part of that means showing an example of what doing good is and um, you know for for us we we want to work more with communities communities of people who maybe who are unemployed one of the, one of the elements that we're really passionate about is community work and um, but but working with community organizations to add value to people who are unemployed people who don't have the right skills people who are inexperienced and create a kind of people fantastically skilled people who will work and add to the local economy so get them from an unemployment stage to an employment stage as about working with the, with the organizations who are willing to take to these people at chance but also working with the organizations who already work and provide support for them um, mm-hmm. and and marry up the two so part of our, our ethics is that we we have to do good by the people that we work with um people make me um, mad but you know if i was offered a, a huge contract worth millions of pounds and i had nothing to do with what we were doing or in in fact it it just didn't make sense to what our our vision was mm-hmm. i would have to really seriously consider is this worth compromising our core values okay. and our ethics you know because it's very important to us what we do i'm not blowing my own trumpet when i say our job that we were in we were paid very well for what we've done um we we decided to step away and do this because we love what we do um it's a it's a pleasure to do what we do every day to meet the people that we meet and to experience the things that we experience and i think that I wouldn't change anything for me mm-hmm. and I believe that that comes from our ethics I believe that that comes from the philosophies that we've created under our for our uh, we have a tagline which is engage enable and empower and the idea is in every touch point even in this conversation I will aim to engage you I will you know I'll I'll aim to empower you so enable mm-hmm. engage enable and empower and and hopefully by giving the knowledge that I have it can be passed on to your listeners or watchers um yours and uh you to learn something from that and that feeds directly back into our ethics and and you know it makes me feel good about what i do and if if you stray away from what your ethics and your core values are you won't have that same feel good feeling um and and why why bother then if that's the case because that's not what makes you happy what makes you happy is doing the things that you want to do aligned with your core values and your ethics I mean that's beautiful what you said and I really hope people are listening to you and people would follow what you're saying here because um your core values are actually what makes you as a person as a human being Yes yeah. yes uh, it, it's it's yeah. it, they're, they're they're always a good sign post or what do I do next if you, if you have if you have a challenge that faces your business um are you as an individual what I find is if you go back to your core values if you go back to your vision you go back to your ethics mm-hmm. that will create that that's like a beacon so it creates the direction for you and if you don't have ethics and you don't have your core values then you're just wandering aimlessly 
and people won't actually know who you are or what your organization is. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. whereas if you if you have a, a code of ethics or you have your your core values, as we call them, people will say, well, I know about that organization and I know why I can add value to that organization. Otherwise, there, it will be very mixed, the type of people that you attract to the organization. Therefore, there's no real way of knowing where your organization will go or how successful it will be. The, the core values are core what we do. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mr. JP, for coming to s TV and speaking with us. It was so lovely having you on the show. And thank you for sharing such great knowledge that you have with you. And, I mean, you actually spill the beans, you know, you actually spill the secrets of, the, you know, the steps and strategies that you shared with us. So uh, I wish you more and more success. And thank you. thank you so much again. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And it's been a fantastic experience to speak to you. Um, and look, uh, I, I always say to people, if you're ever wanting more information, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn under JP Taggart or just developingyourpeople.com. Um, a bit of a plug is we, we also do a series of videos called Culture Talks. Okay. Um, and you, you can find us on Core Impact on YouTube um, and, and follow what, what our journey is and, and the people that we're speaking to. But absolutely delighted to speak to you today. And I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. And also, I would like to just uh, add something here that if you could, I mean, uh, send the link uh, to, uh, mm -hmm. to, I mean, you know, to me. So I'll just ask my team to mention it in the description box so that people could visit it. Yeah, sounds good. I will do that. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much again. All right, guys. That's yeah, it from SQ TV. Keep on.